If you can't name what I can fix that is from, you're probably not a millennial. I got it. What? Holes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's Sam. Winning. Oh, Sam. Hashtag winning. I can fix that. I can fix that. He was like the first baller I remember watching in, in movies. Like, dang, this guy's cool. Mm -hmm. This guy can literally fix roofs. What else did he fix? Windows. Yeah. He painted. Yeah. He was selling those tasty freaking yams or oh, whatever those onions dude, were. Didn't those sound good? Oh man, I wanted to, ever since then I wanted to mm -hmm. bite into a whole onion, a sweet onion. Mm -hmm. And they named it Sploosh. Is that what they called it? Yeah. Yeah, that's what Zero called it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright. I don't want to dig anymore, Grandpa! <laughs> well that's just too dang bad! Today's topic is about waking up and punctuality. For the lay person out there, punctuality means being on time. Just, you know, everybody probably knows what punctuality means, but. Waking up and being on time, can you elaborate? Waking up. So, being a entrepreneur or just actually being a functioning member in society requires that you actually wake up every day, one, and if you have any kind of social contact whatsoever, then your life requires some level of punctuality. So this video does not only apply to entrepreneurs, it applies to all people in life. Yeah. So, Seth, first question. A lot of people in today's society, a lot of people we know, have problems with punctuality, and my, my opinion, this could be wrong, is I'm gonna go ahead and venture out to say that 99% of the reason why people are late to things are because they oversleep. Yeah, maybe not 99, but I would say the vast majority. Yeah, for morning stuff, it's like people, and it, maybe it's not even that they oversleep, but poor time management, they think that they can get ready faster than they're able to. Dude, I, it, 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 sometimes it seems like people just Genuinely, there are people out there that just don't think it's important. They don't, yeah. They'll show up like 10 minutes late and not say anything. Yeah. 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 Now, there's a big, like, there's a difference between somebody over, oversleeping and showing up late. And, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm such a piece yeah. of shit. And then somebody saying, like, just show up 15 minutes late, like, it's normal. Yeah. And it's just like, like, how, how's it going today? What the hell? Like, hey, we, we've been waiting here for 15 minutes. So that begs the question, like, why is it that some people. Are, like have that ticking yeah. clock in their head. They're like, I cannot be late to this. I, I, I really think the answer is oversleep or poor time management. But I think the, the one that we can fix today for our viewers is, and I, okay, so you're probably asking yourself why we're talking about this. We're not experts in almost anything, but I would say we're experts on punctuality. Pretty I would say it. we're freaking, we're about as good as it gets because we have good time management. Yeah. We, we know ourselves. I mean, you have to. You have to. I have a day job, I have a couple of side hustles, creative outlets, families, mm -hmm. girlfriends, friends, flag football leagues, Full dogs, jobs. parents, yeah. family in town, dinner events, YouTube weekend channel, stuff, birthday parents parties. Stuff. There's stuff going on all the time. Yeah, if you're not um, a good time manager, you might as well kiss your dream of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, Goodbye. you gotta figure that out you leave the social structure of having a manager, having a set time to work. It can so, be great, it can be a dream for some. Yeah. Dream for me, but you have to have the tools to be able to operate in that environment. Definitely do. So let's break this down. Break it down. How, break it, break I, it. I really think overall, most of the reason why people can, are late is because they don't get out of bed in the morning. Yeah. If they have a flight at 7.30 a.m., they set an alarm for 5 a.m. because they know they got a pack still, they gotta get to the airport, they gotta get through security, but they oversleep, they mm -hmm. sleep through their alarm. Mm -hmm. Or they, they unconsciously, subconsciously turn it off. So Seth, how, how do you, do you have problems with oversleeping through alarms or turning them off in your sleep? And if so, how do you combat those? So you know I just took like a four month hiatus I got, mm -hmm. I got rid of my apartment. I basically couch surfed and used Airbnb for the last, and family and friends for like the last four months to live. Yeah, you're on your redemption tour. Yes. Yeah. 
the reason I bring that up is because historically, under normal circumstances where I have my own place, I'm never late to anything in the morning, and I can get up at 5.30, no problem. Mm -hmm. But but when I'm on other people's schedule, and when other people have late nights, and they have friends over till like 2 a.m., and I have to stay up, changes things. What I'm trying to say is, the thing that's most important for me and that I learned by experience is that going to bed at a decent time and having a quiet evening environment between the hours of like 9 and midnight is absolutely critical to being able to get up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. No one's a superhuman. There's people out there that can operate off 4 or 5 hours of sleep a night, but that's not most people. Especially young people. Mm -hmm. So, that's all just to say that I think one of the most important things you can do to set yourself up for success in the morning is to do the right thing at night, which kind of bleeds into every area of life. Yeah. You can't expect to make a lot of money in, overnight. Yeah. It's, it, yep. it's you're, about you're absolutely right. Work. You're kind of talking about a cycle. There exists a cycle. There is like two tornadoes that you can be caught in. One is the stay up late, party life, sleep in late, and oversleep. Or the responsible go to bed early, wind down every night around 10, 10.30, get up early. Yeah. Whichever cycle you're in, it's tough to get out of that. Yeah. Like for me, I'm in the tour, I'm in the cycle of like going to sleep early, getting up early. And it's tough for me to get out of that and stay up late. It's I can't even sleep in if I want to. Like I really can't even sleep past 7 a.m. If I stay up till 3 a.m., I'll still wake up at 7, eat breakfast, then I'll take a nap. Yeah. Because, think, because it's like, it's part of your ritual. You yeah. can't get out of it. You're like, oh, oh I can't get out. I'm You're trapped. talking about basically a proactive versus a reactive tornado. Yes. The proactive tornado is where you're in control of your life. You purposefully going to bed early and you're purposely getting up early. The reactive tornado is, oh, I have friends over tonight, so I guess I'll stay up till 2 a.m. and I won't be able to get up till 9. And, well, and they're not tired because they slept in till 10. Yeah. You're not, you can't go to sleep at 10 if you get, you wake up at 10, so it really is a cycle. Like, yeah, you can't get out of it. You have to force yourself to either go to bed early or wake up early, even though you're tired, and get through the day so that you're dog tired by 10 p.m. Yeah. Like, it's a cycle that you can literally get trapped in. Yeah. But you'll, it also is about being proactive. You have to make the choice, like, if I wanted to, to stay up late, I have to decide, okay, I'm going to sleep in today, or okay, I have to stay up late tonight. Yeah. If somebody wants to get up early in the morning, they have to decide, I'm gonna go to sleep early tonight, or I'm gonna get up tomorrow and be tired all day. Mm -hmm. You have to decide one or the other. So, let's talk about how do you wake up in the morning and prevent yourself from oversleeping? Because I, I'm a punctual person, but this still isn't easy for me. Yeah. Like a very, a thing I've had success with is keeping my phone plugged in across the room, not having it reachable from the bed. Once you get out of bed, you're a lot less likely to get back in bed. People still do it. I've still done it. Yep, I've done it. But that's an easy, that's an easy win right there. Yep. Another thing you can do if you're really having trouble with this stuff is they have those morning lights, those like plug in lights that will actually create artificial like sun, sunlight upon waking, so it feels like a natural wake up, because I think the, the difficulty is waking up when it's still dark. Yeah. For most And people. when your partner is still sleeping, you what about be quiet, yeah, yeah. and like get ready in the dark. That's one of the problems I have. I feel like that would that would help me though, if I felt yeah. like I was actually bothering somebody by being a lazy POS. Oh yeah, yeah, if I snooze too many times, I feel yeah. bad, because I'm yeah. like, my wife can hear, and she doesn't have to get up for another hour. Yeah, that, so I'm like, you're oh, in a crap. good situation. Yeah. So I'm like, crap, I gotta turn this off, and then I, I pull my, my cat always needs on me in the morning, so he helps me wake yeah. up. Yeah, and then you're in like a position where you're shamed. Like you have yeah. to explain to your wife, like, yeah, I'm a piece of shit. I wanted to get up at 5.30, but I yeah. don't have it Yeah, anymore. so like, didn't you, didn't you have to record today? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, she's like, oh. Yeah, that yeah. helps. Yeah, it does. Like, it's accountability. That, yeah, that accountability, that social pressure. Yeah. Because like for me, I sleep alone, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, I'm not bothering anyone when I, when I snooze six times like I did today. Yeah. Five times. Five times. Yeah, I snoozed three times. Yeah. Fine. And I, but the thing is, we have time management. We accounted for the fact that we were going to snooze. It's true. I don't need to set my alarm till 5.30, but I set it for 5.05 .05 because I know the chances of me subconsciously snoozing are very high. And I do put my phone far enough away where I have to lean out of my bed and put a foot on the ground to turn it off. So I'm getting out of bed, but I'm still able to lay back down. Mm -hmm. I could take it a step further like you and put it on the opposite side of the room. I've had and, I, and I do that whenever I have flights. 
because you can't come back from a missed flight. They also have apps out there where you have to shake your phone X amount of times to turn off the alarm. Or answer or a really tough, yeah. oh my answer gosh. Answer a question, do yeah. some math problems. What I think would be helpful for me is like if if it was like motion detecting and it kept yeah. turning the alarm on if it wasn't motion. Because when I wake up, first thing I do is I grab my kettlebell and I try to do like 30 or 40 kettlebell swings with music in. <laughs> Dang, and, you like yeah. take the time to put in music and everything? Yeah, I put in my earbuds and I blast some like some like Limp biscuit and then I like do my kettlebell swings and then I'll do like 20 push-ups and then by then like my blood's pumping, mm -hmm. I'm warm, I jump in the shower, take a blasting cold 60 second shower and that'll work. And then I'm up. I feel good. See, I take it a, I take a much slower route. <laughs> I sit there, I turn off my, I decide I'm gonna get up and I pet my cat for about 10 minutes. And then in that 10 minutes, I'm about to pee my pants because I chug water before I go to sleep. Oh, nice. And so when I wake up, it's like- That's, That can be helpful. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm about, I'm, I'm literally on the verge of wetting the bed every morning when I wake up. It like hurts to get up and go pee. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but it helps me. Yeah. I, and I and I, I feel like, I don't know, I feel hydrated when I wake up when I drink tons of water before bed. That's good, but, man. Um, That's your most dehydrated state. Yeah. Also, first thing you wake up in the morning, if you can do water then too, that'd be good. Yeah. Before you eat anything. Because the absorption- Yeah, I chug, a, I chug a full water before I yeah. pee too, and that's, yeah, yeah. that's also difficult. Because the absorption time of water on an empty stomach is like only, like, only like 15 or 20 minutes. I believe it. So. But yeah, waking up is important. There are ways so you can put your your phone, everybody uses their phone as alarms. Put it on the other side of the room. This helps you wake up. It also helps you go to sleep because you're not laying there in bed taking in the blue light. Yeah. Is it the blue light that's bad? It's blue light that's bad. And not letting your pineal gland release the melatonin that your brain needs to fall asleep. Nice. Alright, so why is punctuality important though? It to shows you, people you care. It does. If you're the if you're the kind of person that doesn't care when people are late, guess what? You're the person that's always late. Yeah. If you if you don't care when somebody shows up 20 minutes late to a meeting, that's because you're usually that person. Yeah. And you you're able to empathize with, oh, I get it. It doesn't really matter, but it does matter to people. And if you're if you're trying to develop relationships in the business world or make friends, it just, it really does show that you don't care. And here's why. If your favorite musician wanted to meet you for coffee at 5 a.m. at a spot in downtown, would you miss that? Would you be late to that? No, you wouldn't. No. If your car broke down or something catastrophic happened, yes, you would. But I would venture to say that you wouldn't be late to that because most of the time when we're running late, it's because of poor time management and oversleep. Yeah. You would, you would set an alarm, you would go to sleep early, you would set 10 alarms, put your phone across the room, you would wake up, take a shower, you'd be pumped to go meet your favorite idol. Yeah. But if it's a, if it's a breakfast meeting with your friend, you know, and you show up 10 minutes late, it's not a big deal, but you're, you're training yourself to not be punctual and that's bad. I really feel like, I really feel like it's as simple as if you show up late on a regular basis, it just tells the other person that you are not important to them. And you're lazy. I, I, I just feel like people are lazy when they're late all the time, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it screams to me. Be, and I feel that way because when I'm late to stuff, it's because I was being lazy or I don't care about it. That's really why. This Whenever I care about stuff, I'm never late to it because mm -hmm. it's it's on my it's on my it's in my head that I have this today and I'm building my day around that. All these other little things I'll be late to because I don't care about those. Yeah. I'm not saying pick and choose what you're late to, but I'm saying like if something's important to you, you're not going to be late to it. If yeah. something is just eh to you, you're probably going to be late to it. So you got to care about stuff and care about the people you're meeting with. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like some people out there just like might be biologically programmed to always be late and just some people just have that thing in the back of their mind like shit, 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 shit. We gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Yeah. And some people don't. So I kind of wonder if like you and I were just born with this thing where like we... I mean, I was definitely taught to be like that from my dad. I never showed up to one practice, school function, anything my entire life late. My yeah. dad's always like, like even going to church on Sundays 
we're like always getting there 15 minutes early. We're like, we got, we're gonna be late, we're gonna be late, we're gonna be late. And then we get there and nobody's in the parking lot. It's true. We're like, oh, we're early. Again, we've been early for 28 years that up to my account. Yeah. I'll actually purposely set my watch a few minutes fast. That helps that. too. Yeah. I don't know. You could you could be right. You could be it can be taught, it can be learned. Yeah. But you can also train yourself to to get out of that cycle that you're in. Yeah. So what's the takeaway here, Jordan? I wanted I want this this video to focus less on being punctual and more about like helping people wake up because even me as a punctual person, I struggle with waking up. Like it sucks waking up early every morning when it's pitch black outside. Yeah. And everybody else is sleeping and the last thing your body wants to do when you wake up in the morning is get going. Like sleep is good for you, it's healthy. Mm -hmm. And so your body is gonna fight, fight to turn off that alarm mm -hmm. and go back to sleep. It's, a, it's a, gonna be a battle every day. So you have to prepare for that battle and put your phone on the other side of the room and, and combat yourself. Because if you want to get up every morning and do a workout, it sounds good the day, during the day, the day before. But that morning, it doesn't seem like a good idea anymore. Yeah. It's like temptation. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's just like temptation. It sounds good in the moment. And then after you get going that day, you're like, man, I freaking skipped my workout again today. And it mm -hmm. makes you feel like crap. Yeah. But you're not going to feel like crap if you go ahead and get up, do your workout, you're going to feel accomplished. Yeah. So I think the big takeaway here is, Know yourself and get out of bed in the morning, whatever way you can figure out. And, and be on time to stuff, because it does matter. It matters to the people you're meeting with. I agree. And if you are gonna be late, just let them know. I always appreciate when people are gonna run 30 minutes late and they let me know in advance. Agreed, yeah. Don't, Instead of it like yeah. being, if you're meeting at 10 and somebody texts you at 10.03, hey, running about 20 minutes late. Right. Like. You knew cool. you were late. Cool. About 20 minutes yeah. ago. Yeah, you knew you were running late already. You just were putting off letting everybody else know. Yeah, that's a whole other topic, managing expectations. Yeah. I'm not mad when somebody's five minutes late oh, when yeah. they told me 15 minutes ago yeah, they were going to be exactly. five minutes late, but I am mad when somebody's five minutes late when they never communicated it. Yeah. Because you know you're going to be late before, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Ugh, don't get me started, dude. Yeah. This is a, this is a hot topic, guys. And any, anybody that is waking up and breathing every day, this applies to. Yeah. Let us know what you do to wake up in the mornings. Um, or don't. Or don't, but please do. Follow Jordan on Instagram, at Mickey Jordo, as in Mickey Mouse. M-I-C-K-E-Y-J-O-R-D-O. Or don't. Or do. Or do. Go ahead and follow me. He's got some nice stuff on there. Actually, you never post. You should post more often. I you're gonna get I a try bunch of followers to. And no one's gonna. I know. I know. I'm, I'm gonna try and start posting at least once a week. All right. I I don't like when I follow people and they post like three things a day. I'm like, man, that's too much. Yeah. I mean, agreed. But yeah. we're talking about like one a month would be an yeah. improvement for you. That's true. That's true. You want to sign us off today, Jordan? All right, guys. That's it. We are over and out. We hope you have a great 